There was a teaching that we did and we said, go back, try again. That was the testimony that she gave. This is that season. Go back and speak to that thing again. Get back into that relationship. Go back and apply again. Go back and see that person again. Go back. Anywhere that you know God has said you should go, that when you went, it didn't look, it didn't turn out like you planned, go back. That thing you spoke to that didn't move, you're expecting a healing, a miracle, so go back and speak to it again. Speak to it again. This is the season. I've told, I've, I've told this house before that if I was trying to break a wall, I can hit it with a hammer 20 times and the wall is standing. But there is one last hit, one, that when it hits, boom, the whole world comes down. This is that season. It's a breakthrough season. Breakthrough season. Break it and go through and possess what belongs to you. It's as simple as that. Am I talking to anybody? Fantastic. This morning we're going to push forward in our teaching. We're going to end the teaching that we started last week, which is remain, remaining above only and not beneath. We, we, we've, we, we've been, God has been talking to us um, in a series. It's interesting when the teachings come, they come like they're separate, but when they're taught, we see that they're all, all together. God has a way of doing that. Who has that experience here? Where, 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 where you're working with God and um, at first it just looks like it's by itself but before you know it, it's all connected. In fact, everything is connected. I'll, I, that's when that, that, no, I just tell you. Everything's connected. If you, in this area of your life, you're, you're treating somebody bad, it affects something in this area of your life. That's just how it is. In the spirit, it's all connected. So, so, so you can't you can't be treating somebody bad here and expecting great favor there. It's all connected. So, have integrity, fill it with love. You can't give what you didn't receive. There's no how. If you don't know God's love, you can't really give quality love. It's impossible. Because one day you will just say, you know what, I've had enough, and then you'll lose it. Except you're receiving from God constantly. So husband, you should be drawn from God. Lavish on wifey. A wifey should be on your knees drawing from God. I lavish you and help you. Life is good. That's the only way. Am I talking to you now? Yes, Fantastic. We, our first teaching was uh, unsinkable. Our unsinkable identity in Christ was our first teaching, and we learned quite a few things. I'm just going to go very, very quickly. This morning, uh, yes, this morning, I have my props over here. Very, very. You know, I, I, I tried. I left this in the water all week long, hoping that it would soak. Now, if it's soaked, what will happen? It'll sink. Exactly, you guys are so clever. I don't have to teach you that anymore. Okay, this is a bottle of water and there's a cork in it. And the cork is floating on top. And we learned that we have been designed to be like this cork. If we, if we just remain being a cork, no matter what is done to us in this life, if we remain in our identity in Christ, we are unsinkable. We're just practically unsinkable was a very good visual. That if only we would, like, like, like the only person that can sink us is us. Am I talking to anybody? Like I told them in, in, in the first service, whenever we are bearing bad fruit or we're not living this mountaintop life, in that, you know, it's like our hand is in it. Meaning that you have, you, you have played a part in being beneath. You have been designed to be on top. At any point in time that you are not on top, you have played a part. A part actively against your DNA, against your design. Am I talking to anybody? And then we left that and went to this. This cork is in the middle. 
is not on top. But you can see it's trying to get on top. Why is it not there? Because there's a stone tied to it. Baggage, 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 baggage. After this teaching last week, I thought that a lot of us would, would get into some serious self-examination and try to figure out what the baggage is. But what I discovered is that not everybody did. So we're going to spend a little bit of time to figure out what's the baggage? How do I identify the baggage? Because this is life changing. You see this, this, if I was to cut this rope immediately without any other action, this cock would rise to the top. It is possible that in some areas of our lives, we are living above. But in some other areas, we are living beneath. So let's not get too confident that, you know what, I have money and I'm good. Money is not everything. I don't need to break that down. Do we believe? Fantastic. What could the baggage be? What could this baggage be? Um, you know, we talk about, if, let's talk about fruit about bearing fruit. You know, if there is a part of my life I am not seeing success, even if I don't know where it's coming from, the fact that there's no success in this area of my life should cause me to go to that area of my life and start to look backwards. There are times when we don't know what's causing what's happening, but something is happening. The thing about fruit is that it's visible. It has effect. It has effect on you and others. So it's easy to, to, to figure out where the bad fruit is. If I'm struggling in my finances, then the bad fruit is in my finances. If I'm struggling with my relationships, then the bad fruit is in my relationships. If I'm angry all the time, then, my, then the bad fruit is in anger. If I'm stubborn, then I know the bad fruit is in some stubbornness. So, so, so even if I don't know what's producing, at least I know where the problem is. But this morning we're just going to come, look into the word, and start to see what the word says about fruit and, and trees. First of all, um, when we look at Deuteronomy 28, 13, it says the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And above, amen, very good. And that was one very sharp young lady up there. And above only and not beneath. The key about this is, is the only. I, initially we thought above was like the key, is the only. Because sometimes you can just forcefully get above, but can you remain there? Only above. That's where the power of God comes in. So we went, let me, let's just do a quick, uh, you know. So we went and we, said if you have a problem it's okay to study your problem it's okay to google ever say google it okay. that, that's what we all do but you've got to know more about what god says about the issue than what google says about the issue if, if your mind is filled with google which is the, the the problem then you don't have the power to speak peace or healing into that situation because only the word of god builds up that ability to speak peace in the storm. So many times the mistake that we do is that we spend three hours on Google. Do you know how it takes time when you start to Google from one site to the next? Before you know it, it's one hour, it's two, then it's three, so wow, I need to go to bed. And then I prayed for three minutes. So Google gets three hours, Father God gets three minutes. And then we're struggling, why didn't we see the miracle? I mean, is this, am I, am I ministering to somebody? So, so we've, got to be, we've got to be intentional. Intentionally make sure that you spend more time with God, you know, than being an expert on what the problem is. So I don't know what the problem is right now, but, but you know, you don't need to be, need, you don't need to know more about the problem than what God says about the problem. Am I talking to anybody? Fantastic. And then we talked about it remaining above. It's, it's effortless. That cork will remain on top effort, effortlessly. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be 
that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. You know, it says, my word shall accomplish what I please and shall prosper in the thing in which I sent it. The word of God is a messenger sent out to, to carry out the message. Do you just get that? And his word says that you are above only and not beneath. But what we're going to see, or what you've seen right here, is that there are things we can do that can work against the word of God in our lives. This cock is not where it should be. Amen? It was designed to be above, but now it's below. Okay? We, we spoke about remaining above. The problem that we, the first thing that we do is this. We look at, we, we have experiences in the past that were not so good. We take from that experience and we project it into our current situation. So, an example is that um, the guy, you know, finds his girlfriend, dating somebody else, you know. He sat outside the hotel room all night long. In the morning, you know, she comes out and wow, his heart is broken. Anybody get the picture? He has a new girlfriend now. But he's just not gonna trust her. No matter what she says, he's just not gonna trust her. He just can't make himself trust her. And even though she was the one that God has sent to him, because he can't get past what happened and he's projecting into this situation, what should have been a good relationship it's completely messed up. Does it make sense? We must not, we must have the ability to keep what's behind, behind, and reach out for what's in front. At the last place of work, your boss was unfaithful. He made promises that he never kept. And you lost out. Now you're in this new place. The boss is nice, but you don't trust him, and you're, and you're not giving your all because he is a boss and you're projecting. And this is a person who could promote you and put you to where God wants you to be. But because you've carried the baggage from the past, you're not giving your best currently, therefore you can't get to where God wants you to go. Am I talking to anybody? You know, I, and so, so we, we've really got to start figuring, you know, one, you need to know who you are today. And then why am I the way I am? Why am I the way I am? Does that make sense? Why am I the way I am? I'm, I'm very impatient, why? I'm looking for love, why? I'm proud, why? I'm overly sensitive, why? I'm just self-conscious, why? Because somewhere along the line, you're gonna find what it is that's producing that fruit. And that's what needs to change for the fruits to change. Everybody say, cut off the baggage. Cut off the... Father, I pray that you give your children the, the, the ability to see and cut off the baggage today in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Philippians 3, 13 to 14, very powerful. It says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Everybody say, forgetting those things which are behind. This verse sounds so simple and not so important. It is very important and it's not simple. You have got to intentionally and consistently forget those things that are behind. What did they do to you five years ago? And you're still hurting. You have not come to the Lord for healing. You're still responding to what they did to you six years ago. But that response that you have to that situation is yielding bad fruit currently. That's affecting you now and in the future. That's baggage. Am I talking to anybody? That's baggage. Are we, are we following? We've got to see, see, this teaching is much deeper than you think. You've, like, throughout this teaching, I hope that we are doing a self-examination. Step by step by step by step. Because, see, I'll tell you this. God designed you. And he designed you to be above and not beneath. When a design fails, who hurts the most? The designer or the designer? 
exactly. God is more eager that, that, you, that, that you are successful than you will you yourself. Right now you think you're really ambitious and you want it all. But the God who, who, who designed you, who created you, wants it all for you more than you do. An architect builds a house, he, 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 he built the house, he wants it to look good. He wants it to be successful. Father God, he wants you successful. Seriously, there are times when, when I hear people's prayers, it's like we are begging him for good things. The Father wants every good thing to be yours. Every single good thing he wants it to be yours. You don't have to beg him like that. You want to let him know that, you know what, I know that you love me. I know that you've provided. Show me how to receive. Where do I go? What do I do? Show me how. It's not that kind of begging, like, you know, God, you're a wicked God, but just in your mercy, just give me a little bit, you know? Because that's what we're doing sometimes. Am I talking to anybody? He wants you to have it. Everybody say, he wants me to have it. He wants me to what? Have it. Fantastic. So, so it says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. It says, forgetting what's behind, reaching forward. Let it be something that you keep in your mind all the time. At all costs, forget what's behind, reach forward. Yesterday is gone. There's not much you're going to do about it. Am I talking to anybody? Yesterday is gone. Today is today, the future is coming. So, so what the Bible says is forgetting what's behind. Too many of us, what's behind, the baggage, is affecting today. And because you let it affect today, it's affecting the future. You've got to let it go. You have got to let it go. Your parents who are the meanest, let it go. They beat you unfairly, let it go. You know, whatever they did, let it go. Forgetting what's what? Behind. Reaching for what's ahead. God has so much for you ahead. Say, God has so much for me ahead. God has so much for you ahead. So much. See, God will exceed your expectation at every turn. There is no, see, you're, you're, you do not have the capacity to see all that God has for you. That's why he will always, anytime you partner with God, he will exceed your expectation. Something supernatural will happen and it will just like wow you. Amen? Amen. So we touched that last week. You know, don't punish the current person for the sins of the latter. Sometimes, have you ever been in, a, in, in, in any kind of relationship and you feel I'm being punished for somebody else's sin? No? Yeah. I have. Just, I mean, it, it, it could be a business one where I'm trustworthy. You can leave your money with me, it's okay. But the guy's watching his money and he's like, so you, you, know, you know, but then he's been burnt before. So now I'm being, you know, I didn't do it. So there are times when we punish people for what other people did. And you don't want to do that because it will, it will affect what's coming in future. This is the truth. Beneath cannot be your permanent location. Poverty cannot be your permanent location. Defeat cannot be your permanent location. Sadness and misery cannot be your permanent location. Shame cannot be your permanent location. Delay cannot be your permanent location. Lack cannot be your permanent location. Confusion cannot be your permanent location. Sickness cannot be your permanent location. Oppression cannot be your permanent location. Affliction cannot be your permanent location. Bondage cannot be your permanent location. Addiction cannot be your permanent location. Depression cannot be your permanent location. Hurt and pain cannot be your permanent location. The low life cannot be your permanent location. This cannot be your permanent location. Am I talking to anybody? This is the time to cut it off. Cut it off. Today, in fact, we just pray that today I cut off every baggage. Let's repeat that. Today, I cut off every baggage. Today, I rise to the top to my natural position, to the place I was created to be. I was created to be above, to be the head, to be placed on a lampstand, 
I'm not under a basket. Holy Spirit set me free. Above is my position. The head is my position. Abundance is my position. Success is my position. Victory is my position. Promotion is my, pro my, my position. The top is my position. Fearlessness is my position. Honor is my position. And progress is my position. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so we went through that. And then we talked about lenses. Everybody is using a lens. Everybody. What kind of lens are you using to, 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 to see the world? For example, the quality of the life that you live now is based on the decisions that you've made. Do we agree? Yes. If you put on the yellow sunglasses and you look at a blue item, it will look like green. Now you're gonna make your decision on green. Would that be a right decision? How does that affect the quality of your life? That's what lenses do. So be careful. I think we're going to do a whole teaching on lenses. So I did all of this to get to where I am right now. We're talking about fruit. You know, um, we're going to read something really quick because we need to really work something out as far as fruit is concerned. Let me go straight to the... Let's look at Luke 6, 43 to 45. I'm going to read it, then we're going to get some revelation. Luke 6, 43 to 45. For a good tree... Do we have it? For a good tree does not bear bad fruit. Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So what I want to ask this one is this. If you see that Bad fruit is baggage that's holding you down. So what do you do? You change the fruit. You change the fruit. Change the tree. We're too quiet. I want some response. So what do we do? Change the tree. No. You're no. no, wrong. I said to you all. Is that what the Bible says? No. What the Bible says? What the Bible says? It says, it says, it says, it says, it says, a, 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 a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. And a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. So if I need to change the fruit, what do I need to change? Clap for yourselves. You got that. Second time around. Is that all the clap you got for yourself? Come on, guys. You're gonna love yourselves. <laughs> As Christians, we, 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 we always win. Win or die, I win. As a Christian, I can't lose. You stop me, I win. You didn't stop me, I win. I, I, I make money, I win. At any point, I win. I just win. I'm a winner. Christ has died for me. I'm going to heaven. I win. <laughs> my, am I talking to anybody? Anyway, the problem is this, and I've seen it. A lot of times, we are bearing bad fruit. Okay, I, okay I'll tell you this too. If, 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 if I meet you today, and after a short meeting, you say, you know, Pastor, you know, I think sometimes you're, you're just full of yourself. I said, wow, that's your personal opinion. And I'm not worried. And then in two, three weeks' time, I meet this lovely lady, and after a while, she says, Pastor, I think you're really full of yourself. Well, there's two people. She says, well, you know, she says, personal opinion. But if in a month's time, I run to somebody else that says, Pastor, you're full of yourself. I think it's time I started to do some self examination. Did they all gang up against me? Did they meet and discuss? The first boyfriend had this problem. The second one had this problem. The third one had this problem. And you're not listening. Did they call this guy? Look, all the ex boyfriends of this person. Let's, let's meet at um, this coffee place tomorrow. And then let's plan that. Each time, you know, we're going to tell her this. The association, the association of ex-boyfriends. <laughs> because that's the only reason why you hear all these different things. And there was no need to check it out. Many of us have heard, see, see, we are so into ourselves, we can no longer see ourselves. People have got to now, at some point, become the mirror. And if it's one person, seriously, it's a personal opinion. Two people, it's okay, personal. But anything three and above, you are proud, you are too sensitive, you are too self-conscious, you are, you, are, you are this and that and that, and you don't look into it. This is what is going on. No, not this one. <laughs> this one. It's what's going on. 
Do you get that? What we're learning now is what? To change the fruit, you have to do what? Now the question is, is what, what is the tree? What's the tree? I wish this was a, a Thursday when we're all talking, because I say, read this and tell me what the tree is, because it's there. What is the tree? If I get this, I'm going to, you know. <laughs> okay, let's, let's break it down. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. Which means trees are not very visible. Every tree is known by its fruit. It means that trees, they're not easy to see. And that's why most of us here have not seen the tree. We just, we just haven't. Because when we finally see the tree today, many of you say, wow, I never thought about that. But it says that the fruit, the fruit will show you the tree. So my question now is, what fruit are you bearing? And we're all bearing fruit. And I pray we have a lot of good ones. But right now, let's focus on the bad fruit. Because the bad fruit is being produced by a bad tree. And that bad tree must go. This teaching is about the bad tree going. Because if we can get rid of the bad tree, and plant the good tree, the fruits are good. How many of you have fasted? A lot of people have fasted and prayed over changing fruit. I really want to know. How many of us have fasted and prayed about changing the, the tree? Anybody? If you know that you've done days of fasting and praying to change the tree, just move your hand. Let me see. Okay, up to three, three people. Not bad. Not bad. But do you see where I'm coming from? The, the enemy has blindsided us in both directions. Because if you don't tax it, it says you cannot see that tree that's producing the bad fruit. If you don't change it, the fruit will continue. That's why there are people that you see they're in delay or, or, or lack or something. Because the problem is there, but they just can't change it because they are focusing on the fruit. Prayer and focus on the fruit will not change the fruit. Am I talking to anybody? Yes. Don't has to be the truth. Okay, today's Bible study, different style. Okay, so basically, every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bamboo bush. Now, now, this is nice. Figs, thorns, grapes, bamboo bushes, all good. They don't, you cannot collect orange from mango tree. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's bring it to the Nigerian context. If you, if you plant an orange tree, you cannot be plucking mangoes on it. And if you plant, the only way you can get mangoes is by doing what? You plant a mango tree. Fantastic. So, so if the fruit is anger, 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 you know, and, and for years you're struggling, I don't blame you because you, you focus on the fruit. You've got to figure out what the tree is, then change the tree. And once you change the tree, everything changes. Then he says, for men of years, a good man, now this is where you need to listen well, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. What's treasure? What's treasure? Valuables. Things that you consider valuable. Things that you, you, yeah, just call it valuables. Okay? Now, so the good man, out of the good treasures, the things in his heart that he gives value to, brings forth good fruit. And the evil man, out of the things that he gives value to in his heart, brings forth evil. The things that you value in your heart is a tree. You dig at that? There is something in your heart that you gave value to, that you've called the truth, that's a lie. And because it's a lie, the devil is using it to steal from you. Any time that you believe that a lie is the truth, you are giving the devil a key to walk in and out of your life and kill, steal, and destroy. But the problem is this, because you consider it the truth, it's always very difficult for you to recognize that it's a lie. Because it takes a certain level of humility to come to the cross and say, well, you know what, I used to think this was true, but it's not. But where I want to come at you 
is this. If the fruit is bad, it's not working for you. It's enough reason for you to abandon what you used to think was true. Because there really is a belief that you have that allows you to do the wrong thing, get the wrong results, but keep doing it. Am I talking to anybody? I, 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 I'm not sure if I took this over your head or I'm bringing it, because really, I really pray that, that Holy Spirit give me the capacity to teach this understandably. But if you get it, it's like a light. So, so, so forget the fruit, forget the anger, forget losing it. Start to think, what, 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 what truths am I operating on? What truths am I operating on? That's, gonna, that, that's making it okay for me. And the fact that I know I'm getting the bad result means that I know something that looks normal to me must be not normal. Does that make sense? Yes. When, when you go back to your, to your thinking and your belief system, I say, well, I know that I'm not, I, I am not progressing in my finances, so I know that something I believe about finances is wrong. But, but it's something that I believe is the truth. If it's my business, the same thing. Something that I'm believing is true is wrong because the fruit is bad. So, so, so what is it that I, I, I have valued so much, made it the truth, and I'm doing it? Does that make some sense? See, see, at the end of the day, that is what allows us to remain above the ability to go back and check. It's very hard for us. Very, very hard for us. To, 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 to say, because see, there's something, we are attached to our truths. Seriously, we are. Um, for, you know, for whatever reason, maybe we heard it from our uncle, or something, but it just, we just picked it up. So it's ours, it's our truth. So, so, so it takes some serious humility and submission to the cross to say, well, I used to think this was right, but at this point, I put it down. And I get into the word and I pick up something else. I say, well, I am going to take this as my truth. That is renewing of your mind. Am I talking to anybody? Yes, we're going to part through this because today we're going to finish this. But, 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 but did we get that? See, and, and more than anything else, I want us to, to be able to say, you know what? When I get home, I'm going to sit down quietly and I'm going to have a think session with myself. Where I'm going to think this through, and whatever I need to put down, I'm going to put it down. And I'm going to start, start picking up a new truth so that my fruits can change. The fruit by itself cannot change, the tree must change. The values, what you, the, the, the treasure must change. What changed with the good and evil was the, was the treasure. The treasure was what, what he valued in his heart. Does that make some sense? Fantastic. Okay. Ah. Uh, we've talked about fruits. Let's talk about love. Anytime that you walk in love, you are disconnecting the baggage. Even if you don't know the rules of the game, you don't even, see, even if you don't know the truth, the, the, if you don't know the truth, even though you did not know the truth, most times when you walk in love, you've cut off the baggage. Seriously, is it, is it stubbornness? If you walk in love, you know, you walk away from being stubborn. If, if it's anger, if you walk in love, you walk away from, from anger. There's nothing loving about anger. Whatever it is, if you walk in love, you disconnect. There's something about love that takes you to the top. There's something about love see, uh, that, that's un, un, unsinkable. Also, there's something about this, this environment. You see this? The environment pushes up. If you build a love environment around yourself, that environment will keep you up. We, on Thursday, we spoke about gardens. God put us in a garden, we are still in a garden. The seeds you're sowing daily. See, one is this. Everything you do is a seed. Did you know that? Everything you do. Coming to church today is a seed. Me talking, me here preaching is a seed. Everything you do, from the minute you wake up till you sleep, you are sowing seed. And anybody who sows seeds around them, where are they living? In the garden. May not be called Eden, but it's a garden. So what kind of garden have you planted? Or are you living in? Why talk to anybody? What kind of garden are you living in? The sweet garden? The garden of love. So, so love. So love, so love. I live in that garden of love. Just, just, just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. 
Okay, let me come to cutting the world out. Now, it's like this. Romans 12, 2 says, Romans 12, 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be what? Conformed to this world. We are in this world as Christians. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. It means we are in it, but it's not in us. Make some sense? Okay, let's take 1 Corinthians 1.20. It says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? There is worldly wisdom, of which we all know a lot of, that to God is foolish. And if you start to operate your life as a born-again Christian with the wisdom of the world, this is what happens. It's baggage. Today I have tried to just break down what baggage is so that we can get the full, full benefit of this teaching. You cannot operate your life with the wisdom of the world. There's so many things that the world thinks is wise, but to God is foolishness, complete foolishness. If you look at 1 Corinthians 3.19, it says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. I mean, that just says it all. It says the wisdom of this world is foolishness of is foolishness to God. If this water, the world, enters this cock, the Christian, this cock will sink. The world's values and wisdom fights against God's DNA that's in you to keep you above only and not beneath. Did you get that? You've got to keep the world out. You have to keep the world out at all costs. Bringing the world in is death, separation from Christ. Amen? Amen? So are we getting this? Are we getting this? The only time that we struggle is when we have allowed the world to get on the inside. That's the only time that we ever struggle. So I'm going to end up with this. Take a good look. Let this be something you see in your dream. Above only. <laughs> Never believe. Just like, like the storms, the issues, you know, finances, relationships, business, in all those things, what's happening to you? Are you struggling? It's just your natural position. Who has had this experience? Wherever you go, you just rise to the top. Seriously, like, like, like just wherever you go, you know, you are in Nigeria, once you're in a setting, somehow, boom. Next setting, somehow, boom. Next setting, somehow, boom. Some of you may think this is not possible. I've lived that life. I'm not, I, I'm not even kidding. Where, 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 where you get there with nothing, but in a short while, because they love you, they like you, you're loving, you're smiling, the words from your mouth are sweet and they're sincere, you find yourself here. Am I talking to anybody? This is wisdom. Heavenly wisdom. Let, let's start to intentionally, intentionally, start to know our, our identity in Christ. Let your eyes be eyes of compassion. Your words will be soaked in love. Let your thoughts, okay, let's, let's talk about thoughts quickly. Don't allow yourself to think bad thoughts about anybody. If I get a bad thought about you, and I linger on it, and I let it stay, after a while I can't smile at you real good, after a while I'll say something bad, after a while I'm disconnected. So, irrespective of what you've done to me, I will not allow my heart to dwell on any bad things about you. Living this life is very intentional. See, see, see there's knowledge that when you know it and you do it, people will look at you like you're, you are superhuman. Seriously, um, I will not allow myself to, to, no matter what the devil brings or even what you did, I will not allow those thoughts to stay in my mind. I will always think something good about you. So, so when I smile at you, it's sincere. And when I think about you, it's love. That's why it's easy for me to just send you a heart and tell you I love you. Uh, it's easy because, because I won't allow myself harbor a bad thought about you. Husband and wife, try it. Listen to what I'm saying. It's intentional, but it's amazing. It's amazing. Time is far gone. All that's closed. All that's far.
Father, we thank you this morning for all that you've done and said to us and for us. Holy Spirit, come right now. Come right now, my Lord, and touch every heart under the sound of my voice. Touch our hearts, Lord. Give us understanding. Let's retain what we've heard. And let's be diligent to us to do diligently that which we understand so that we may walk in power unsinkable above only never beneath above only above only above only allowing our identity our dna in christ to to to, to lift us up effortlessly in any area that we find ourselves in every aspect of our lives that we rise to the top Father, we thank you. We know that something big is coming. Father, orchestrate our steps, orchestrate our words, orchestrate everything about us, Lord, that we walk in alignment with your will. That in this season, and every season of our life, Lord, that we lay hold of everything you have released to us in Jesus' name. That we, indeed we are the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. That indeed we are the light that's been placed on the lampstand. So Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. And truly over your lives, know this now, know this now, that whatever the enemy has prepared for evil for you, that your God Almighty has already turned it to good for you in Jesus' name.